Animated music videos are pretty damn cool, but it doesn't feel like there's a lot of talk about why, which I think is a real shame. There's so much about animated music videos that makes them so unique as an art form that I feel like needs a little more discussion. And I mean, if I can't ramble in pretentious detail about it, then what's even the point? I don't know, you could just like them? Like a normal person? <sighs> Could you fucking not? You know I'm right. I think this is most obvious in their sheer breadth of stylistic variety. From the colors, to the lighting, to the line work or lack thereof, to the designs, whether cartoon, comic book, or anime inspired, some going as far as to reimagine beloved characters in new settings, to the animation itself, rendered with hand-drawn 2D, posed with 3D, modeled with stop motion, or even made with rotoscoping and motion capture. Even videos with similar looks end up taking things things in wildly different directions. And I think part of this aesthetic diversity comes from the fact that the short-form nature of their productions gives their creators more leeway to experiment with those visual ideas. For example, the music video for The White Stripes Fell in Love with a Girl, directed by Michael Gondry, was made entirely with Lego. Not realistically rendered 3D models, but actual physical bricks, painstakingly built up, torn down, and rebuilt for every frame. A feat that took months of work for two minutes of video. For anything else, this approach would have been insane, but since it was such a small project, it wasn't as big of a risk to take as, say, making an entire film this way. Especially nowadays, when far more efficient methods are more readily available. This willingness to let smaller projects lean into unorthodox techniques I think can also help get the ball rolling for more abstract videos. From the colorful claymation visualizations of Tame Impala's Feels Like We Only Go Backwards, to the unhinged motion graphic nightmare fuel of things like Noisia's machine gun that just... Yeah. Fun fact, that Tame Impala video, of all people, was directed by the creators of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, so do what that information watch you will. It feels like the smaller scope of an animated music video's production lends their creators the opportunity to experiment more freely because of the smaller risk they entail. But beyond simply going nuts with a neat style, what I find most interesting about this is the way those visual ideas are used to emphasize the through line of their videos. The music videos for some of Siamese's songs, animated by Rudoko, are some of my favorite examples of this. Summer Nights features a group of teenagers sneaking into an abandoned mall to goof around, and which makes heavy use of slow motion across its runtime to emphasize certain moments, as if trying to slow things down long enough to let these kids enjoy their time together, knowing it will eventually have to come to an end. And Mr. Fear uses a paneling motif to emphasize various aspects of its central narrative, from making the havoc wreaked by its monster feel that much more chaotic by cutting between claustrophobically close cuts of the destruction it causes, to the way it establishes the idea of its central characters residing on each side of the screen, and using that to show the growing connection between them, passing objects across panels and even stepping into the other side to find them later on, since visually that's where they should be. These details help to communicate the nuances of these videos in subtle but clever ways, and emphasize how much that willingness to play around can let a video develop such striking imagery. But as much as I love the visual diversity of animated music videos, what I adore more is how those visuals tell a story. Many animated music videos essentially act as short films, but ones that lack any proper dialogue and whose music only provides general thematic context, leaving them to rely heavily on visual storytelling to hit the beats of their narratives, and leading to videos dense with visual information where every shot is purpose-built to push that plot forward as effectively as they can, such as in the animated music video for Twerp's Starlight Brigade. Directed by India Swift and animated by Knights of the Light Table, it follows the journey of a young boy from a far-off planet who, after finding a crashed spaceship, heads into the cosmos and faces off against a vast and powerful alien army who've stolen the stars. I think it's a great video, and what I like most about it is how it condenses a story that feels like it could easily fill an entire feature film, or maybe even a whole series, into such a short space of time. The opening scene alone is an amazing example of how well it does this. It opens with a long pan of a beautifully starry sky. A small hand reaches out toward the star at the center of it all, before the latter is suddenly pulled off screen. It cuts to a wide shot that reveals the main characters of this scene, a young boy held on his dad's shoulders on the cliff of some far-off countryside, and shows the disappearance of that central star isn't an isolated incident. 
There's a close-up of those characters' faces, scared and worried as the camera swings around to reveal the source of this cosmic disturbance. A monumental, triangular spacecraft looming ominously above them, absorbing all the stars in the sky into its void-like mass. It cuts back to the young boy, his face full of fear before a match cuts to him years later, older and wearier. It fades to a wide shot of him sitting on the roof of his family's makeshift home, reaching out to an empty sky, a stark contrast to the bright, vibrant beauty the video opens. Opened with. In only the space of a few shots, it establishes a strong backstory for its main character in his world, one filled with children dreaming of great things, of grand armies with terrifying technologies dashing their hopes and stealing what little they had left, the lingering aftermath of their actions and how even after all of that, there's still a feeling that more is going on just off screen, all through its imagery alone, and which makes it easy to understand why, when an opportunity presents itself, its main character is so willing to head into a now empty the universe to do something about it, despite the risks it may bring. There's an efficiency to this video's visuals that lets it do so much with so little. And just as powerful as the potential for narrative density is the potential for emotional intensity such visual storytelling can create. Something I think is clear to see in the animated music video for Shelter. Animated by A1 Studios and directed by Porter Robinson, who, alongside Madian, produced the original song, this video follows a girl named Rin living in a virtual world and her growing sense of loneliness in it that, all these years later, still manages to get a reaction out of me. And I think a large part of what makes it hit so hard is the way in which its twist of her father saving her from an apocalyptic event is revealed. It shows her last weeks with her father as he builds a spaceship to save her while still trying to make the most of their time together. There's a nostalgic quality to the framing and designs of these shots, with plenty of close-ups and warm, bright colours, while at the same time emphasising a sense of frustration through this timeline of events, as Rin's father struggles to balance making fond memories with her while making time to figure out a way to save her, all the way up until her last moments. And though this sudden rush of memories is a lot for Rin to take in, and it also gives her some sense of solace in her isolation. It's a beautifully tragic sequence that hits at the heart of the video's core message. Shelter's visual direction, more than anything else, communicates the through lines of its narrative with a precise clarity that makes its impact that much more heartbreaking. Despite their short runtime, animated music videos are easily able to create narratives with shocking amounts of technical, thematic, and emotional depth through an efficient use of visual storytelling. But as strong as animated music videos can be by themselves, I think something fascinating happens when they're connected together, and the longer form narratives they can tell and the depth they can give to those worlds. And though there are a good few examples that could easily cover this, for me, there's one that demonstrates this better than anything else. And that I think, considering the focus of this video, would be weird not to at least mention. Gorillaz is a virtual band co-created by Damon Alburn, the lead singer for Blur, and Jamie Hewlett, an illustrator who, at the time of their creation, was most well known for working on the Tank Girl comic series. Inspiration struck the duo one night after spending too long watching MTV, and growing frustrated by what they felt was a lack of substance behind the personalities it featured. To quote Alburn, If you're going to pretend to be somebody or not, which is the whole point of being a rock star, then why not just invent fake characters and have them do it all for you? So, they did just that. With artwork designed by Hewlett and music produced by Alburn, they created four characters, 2D, Noodle, Russell, and Murdoch, for their fake band, and, well, the rest is history. There's a lot to say about Gorilla's success, cultural impact, and even the deeper details of their music. But not only are there already plenty of videos that go into great depth about all of that, but a lot of it is only really tangentially related to what I want to talk about here. Because for me, one of the best parts of Gorilla's is their music videos, and the strange reality they end up forming for their characters. They're just filled with some weird shit, from the enormous animals wandering down the streets with not a care in the world, to the sky-scraping monsters lingering in the distance, obscured from sight by a thin veil of clouds. Undead gorillas hunt people down across a horror movie-esque landscape in the middle of Essex. Ghosts and spirits haunt and hang out with the band. Noodle has a giant head stashed away in her closet. And floating islands are just... a thing here. Hell, it all canonically takes place in the same universe as the fucking Powerpuff Girls of all things. And what's more, one of the bad guys from that show just ends up taking Murdoch's place in the band for a while, after Murdoch gets thrown in jail. 
Each video builds on the last to show off new sides of its character's world and drag it to absurd new depths. But more than just showing off new details, they show off this world in new ways. Their videos have experimented with a variety of different styles and techniques, bouncing between and mixing and matching 2D, 3D, and even live action. Sometimes to the point that they're less animated music videos and more music videos that also happen to have animation. Tonally, for as ridiculous and over the top as they can be, they've also dived into more melancholic depths in subtle and not so subtle ways. Even their very design has changed, both in style, as the band simplifies cartoony looks have slowly but surely taken on more realistically inclined details and proportions, and in the characters themselves, as their respective ages have become more apparent over time. I think this is most obvious in Noodle, who was initially introduced as a 10-ish year old child, went through teenage and young adulthood, and now as of making this video is 30, with her fashion and demeanor changing with each album to reflect her personality as she's grown up and matured over the course of that 20 year period. There's probably a lot of people feeling very old right now, and honestly, I don't blame you. Hewlett himself has commented on this, saying, The idea was to break some of the rules of animation. You know, cartoon characters aren't really supposed to change over time. It's not a static environment for them to simply be dropped into whenever a video needs to be made, but one that, like ours, changes as time goes on, as new technology and ideas rise and fall, and more importantly, one whose shifts push its characters to change alongside it. It feels like a living, breathing world that each video gives us just a quick glimpse of. For as strong as animated music videos can work alone, when strung together, they can create something greater than the sum of their parts. I think what makes animated music videos such a unique art form is the limitation they put their creators under. However, it's not defined by the tools used or the medium explored, like the soft touch of watercolor, the geometric precision of pixel art, or the thick brushstrokes of oil paint, but instead comes from the very format itself, where anything is possible so long as it can fit in the frame of a few minutes. It's a narrow window that requires a high level of creativity and skill to fill effectively that I can't help but appreciate, and whose artistry I think deserves a little more recognition. And yeah, those are my thoughts. This is a video I've been sitting on in one form or another for quite a while now, from being about specific bands or specific videos and so on, but then I realized there's a lot of overlap in the points I want to make about them, so I decided to just say fuck it and combine it all into one general video. I also tried to aim for something a little shorter, just to try and give myself some more room to fuck around with some editing stuff myself, which is quite fitting, I think, given the overall point of the video, and I think it came out well. Granted, I feel like there's probably a lot more I could have covered, since try as I might, there are still plenty of music videos I haven't watched or don't even know exist that probably be worth mentioning, but still. Though I will admit it was quite hard to get through, not because of the video itself, well, mostly anyway, I'm still wary about how this video being very music based might kick up a lot of copyright claims, which are always fun to deal with, but just from the way the world's been for the last week or two with the whole pandemic situation, it's just kinda made it hard not to do anything other than, you know, worry. Like, I thought 2020 was finally gonna be a good year and then just... Fucking hell. Though on that note, I hope you are all doing well, you are staying safe, and are taking proper precautions where you can, keeping your distance, buying only what you need, washing your goddamn hands, and so on. Anyway, let me know what you think. If you agree, disagree, what your favorite music video, animated or otherwise is, if there's any particular song you'd like to see be given an animated music video, etc. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, then check out my last video, where I ramble about my top things of winter 2019. Or watch me talk about what I think makes 1995 Ghost in the Shell feel so timeless. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe to come fly with me. Hit the bell to stay notified, follow me on Twitter for more updates, ramblings, and poor attempts at humor, and hopefully, I'll see you later.